today is <coughs> the feast of the holy name of our Lord. And the good to be again back here in Kentucky. And the epistle for this feast of the holy name of Jesus is taken from the Acts of the Apostles, chapter 4. In those days, Peter, filled with the Holy Ghost, said, Rulers of the people and elders, if we are on trial today about a good work done to a cripple, as to how this man has been cured, be it known to all of you and to all the people of Israel that in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ of Nazareth, whom you crucified, whom God has raised from the dead, even in this name does he stand here before you, sound. This is the stone that was rejected by you, the builders, which has become the cornerstone. Neither is there salvation in any other, for there is no other name under heaven given to men by which we must be saved. And then the gospel, taking that according to St. Luke, chapter 2. At that time, when eight days were fulfilled for the circumcision of the child, his name was called Jesus, the name given him by the angel before he was conceived in the womb. Thus far the words of today's holy gospel. During those eight days between the birth of our Lord Jesus Christ and the day in which he was given his name, what is it that happened inside of that cave in Jerusalem, in, in, in Bethlehem? What words would have been spoken between the Blessed Virgin and, our, and St. Joseph? We know that Joseph was quiet, was not given to much speech. We also know in the life of St. Joseph, only one word that he spoke. There's only one word that he spoke that we know of in his entire life, and that was spoken on the day, on the January the 1st, when he circumcised our Lord Jesus Christ and gave him his name. And for the very first time, that name was spoken by men on this earth. St. Augustine tells us it was spoken formally by the angels. He was called that name before he was born by the angels. And the reason why the scripture tells us this is because it was by that name that they were saved 4,000 years before. It was by that name that they had the strength to listen to Mikael and to follow him in the great battle against the devil. <coughs> the name was first heard in heaven after after St. Michael, or whatever his original name was, the lower angel, who was an archangel, his name was changed. He said, Mikael, who is like unto God? And when he said, who is like unto God? A word was spoken in heaven. Who is like unto God? And the angels heard the response, Michael say this word, Mikael, whatever his original name was, he changed his own name. Whatever his original name was. And who is like unto God? And there came a response from heaven, and the response was Jesus. And all the angels responded. And they followed Mikael, and hearing that name for the first time, they cast Satan into hell. Now this name was spoken first on the very first day of creation for the angels. And the next time that it will be spoken, it will be spoken by a quiet man who was not known for his words, who would be called the foster father of our Lord, who would protect the church in its early days, who was a man of dreams. And today a consideration on this holy name. And the fact that in our times, names don't exist anymore. Except in the great fighters for the devil. There the names exist. Because we are in a time in which <coughs> there are too many words. Everybody <coughs> speaks out words, empty sounds. You have, for instance, the great example of it on the internet. There are some people involved in these forums, for instance, that told me 
multiple times that they have two or three names on their internet forums. And sometimes they enter into an argument where one person, Francesco, argues against Theodore. And both of them are the same person. And they argue against each other. And they change their names. In one forum, they're one name. In another forum, they're another name. And also people say, what do you represent? Well, I represent this company. I represent this nation. I represent this family. I represent this product. And they change always. Because the reality is, they do not represent anything other than their own self. St. Augustine says, two loves built two cities. They are cities. Cities are kingdoms. In this passage of St. Augustine, which is a summary of what goes inside of the heart of man from the beginning of time until the end of time, two loves built two cities. The city of the love of self. But it builds a city. And how am I going to build a city if I tell you I want a city to be built? I want an entire kingdom to be built. For whose glory? In whose name? Well, in my name, of course. For me. No one's going to build the city. And so what do we do? We build in the name of others. We build in the name of justice. We build in the name of truth. We build in the name of saving the whales. We build in the name of goodness. We build in all kinds of names, and they are all lies, and none of them are names. A name says, signifies a nature of a thing. A name signifies what something is. That's what a name is. But we use the word name, and we express sounds, but they are lies. That is why our Lord Jesus Christ says, He who says to me, Lord, Lord, he who speaks the word, shall not enter the kingdom of heaven, but he who does the will of my Father, there's something more to a name than just expression of a sound or an association. William of Ockham, a great heretic founder of our age, 700 years ago, what did he say a name was? He is a guilty of the, of the, of the error named uh, called nominalism, the foundation of all the errors of our times. But how did it all begin? He changed the meaning of the name. He said, there's no such thing as a table. All we do is we take a word table and we apply it to these things we like to sit around. But there's no real table. Name doesn't tell me anything about a table. <coughs> it just makes it easier for us to say, let's sit around that wooden thing <coughs> and let's just sit around it. Let's call it table. And now names and nominalism has entered into religion. And what do they say in ecumenism? It does not matter what name you give the higher power. You can call him Jesus. You can call him Buddha. You can call him Confucius. You can call him Shiva. You can call him Anuman. You can call him any name you want. It's the same. We worship God. We worship the same. The name doesn't matter. But in any real man knows, the name is the most important thing. If you pull out the Rituali Romanum, you will find that there is, how do we deal with devils? When the devil possesses a man, when the devil enters into a man, how do we drive out the devil? By one simple question, what is your name? What is your name? Now, our Lord Jesus Christ, being God, when he says his name, he says it clearly, he says it publicly, he says it to all, and he says the truth. He says his name. But what about the devil? What is your name? And he lies. What is your name? And he hides it. And the way in which Satan is driven out of a man is by simply exposing his name. Now, the name is not a word that is associated with something. A name is a word that indicates the nature of something, that says what it is. 
And God determined that when he became man, who was going to shed his blood for the human race, he would not allow his most sacred name to be spoken even by his holy mother, nor by Joseph. During these eight days, between December 25th and January the 1st, they spoke no words. They must have maintained the whole time in silent retreat, meditating upon the beauty of this child, knowing that no one could dare speak that name, though they knew what name he must be called, until he was active in his name. St. Augustine tells us, oh, the name Jesus means Savior, and the Savior is the one who sheds his blood. And our Lord Jesus Christ hates words. He who is the word hates words. He hates empty speech. But when he says word, it is made flesh. When the God the Father says word, it is God for all eternity. And when the word acts, there is creation. And when the word acts, there is redemption. <coughs> the word speaks and says, let there, is, let there be light. Light is created. For all truth comes from the word. <laughs> but for man, words are empty lies. And this includes men who claim to follow our Lord Jesus Christ. Men who claim to belong to his kingdom. They do not really believe in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. They don't really believe in his name. <clears throat> By this name, all knees in heaven, on earth, and under the earth shall bow. Everything reacts to this holy name. What must have happened when Joseph, the quiet saint, spoke in the most wonderful manner in which it could ever be spoken, that no one can ever repeat until the end of time, and the very first time at the circumcision of our Lord that he said that holy name, what happened? Idols were destroyed. Hell was shaken. The entire universe was shaken. Devils were driven out from wherever they were. By the power of Joseph, who is the one who shall increase, saying the name of Jesus. And when he spoke that name after the blood was shed, and he would not speak that name before the blood was shed, because for Christ there is no name <coughs> unless it signifies the reality. And modern man, <coughs> not only modern man, but all man in sin, all men in any way connected with Satan, all of them take names and turn them into empty words. What is the name of our Lord Jesus Christ? Many use that name now. Remember our Lord said, there will be many false Christs. They will say that he is in the desert. Go ye not out. They will say he is in the closet. Believe it not. <coughs> because as... <coughs> The, the lightning goes from the east and to the, to the west. So shall the coming of the Son of Man be. For where the body is, there the eagles shall be gathered together. Two opposite signs. The one sign that is visible to all. The other that is visible only to the elect. And he gives the one that's visible to the elect as the proof of the one that's visible to all. Christ shall come as lightning from the east and to the west. And why is this? Because he made the lightning. He made its direction. He created all things. And we don't recognize the power of this holy name. <laughs> we don't really believe in the power of his name. Everyone today claims that they go in the name of Jesus. You can repeat that name bazillions of times if you're in the charismatic movement. Each time a blasphemy added to a blasphemy. You can repeat that name and repeat it and repeat it. And the word is repeated, but the name is not. Only the word. Our Lord said, who says to me, Lord, Lord. Who says, Jesus. Who says these sounds does not enter the kingdom of heaven. But he who does the will of my Father. And he who believes in the sacredness and holiness of his name. What is the name of our Lord Jesus Christ? It is the name of the Creator, 
the name of the Redeemer, the name <clears throat> of He who is the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end of all things. And we are now in an age in which more men are speaking more boldly the name of Lucifer with the full belief in Satan. And knowing that they are fighting for a kingdom of Satan against the kingdom of God, then there are men fighting for the kingdom of Christ. There is only one name. And that name is the name of he who is everywhere, who created this entire universe and holds all of an existence, who maintains all things by his divine providence. When the king walked on this earth, what was he doing when he was in this cave? He was making sure that the star stayed above him so that the three kings could find their way there. He made sure <laughs> the angels were singing so that the shepherds would hear their words. He made sure that the sun was doing his duty about the earth, going about the earth. He made sure the stars maintained their place. He was governing every ant and every tree and every grass. And as it says in the Psalms, he was looking at that very moment at the deer. At one deer he looked and the deer was born. Another deer he looked and it were gall galloped through the forest. Another deer he turned his face away and the deer died. He was governing every atom and molecule of the universe. He was watching over everything. He was also breathing with his wrath and his justice fire upon the demons in hell. And they were twitching in the fire of his wrath. And he was judging Satan. And he was comforting Abraham. And he was making sure that they were inside of the bosom, <coughs> inside of limbo. Letting him know that soon you will, the day, gates of heaven will be opened. He was busy. He was very busy. He was not only in a little cave in Bethlehem. He was not only with a few shepherds and a few cows and a few sheep. He was everywhere in his power, in his majesty, in his loving magnificence. He was in the angels as they were doing their work. He was receiving the praise of the angels. Each of their choirs were filling their duty of adoring and praising him. He was preparing the destruction of Satan by the crucifixion. He was here in this holy sacrifice of the mass. He was everywhere at all times. We need to open our eyes. What do we believe in? when we believe in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. We do not believe only in the Protestant idea of a Savior. The Protestant idea of a Savior is, whenever you're in a fix, you need a Savior. Like many times getting on an airplane, Father, I hope we don't need your, plane. I hope we don't need your prayers on this flight. Because the only time you need prayers is when the plane's going down. So I hope we don't need your prayers on this flight. Hope everything's going to be okay and we don't need prayers. The Savior is not there to fix you when you're in a fix, in a bind. He saves all things at all times. His mercy makes it possible for the ants to find their food. His mercy makes it possible for the temperature to be the right for us, that we don't freeze to death, that we don't burn. His mercy makes sure that the leaves find their way to the ground, that it might be enriched. And makes sure the sun finds its way to the leaves, that it might turn green. His mercy is everywhere in this universe. And His power is everywhere in this universe. And when we say that we walk in His name, what are we supposed to do? The priest of God, and not only the priest of God, but also every baptized Catholic, is supposed to be in a way an ambassador who walks in the name of Christ. And what does it mean to speak in the name of Christ? We speak what our commander tells us to speak. We use the words that he uses. We command, can communicate the truth that he commands, and we don't communicate something else. And if we communicate something else, we cease to be his ambassador. <clears throat> we cease to be carriers of his name. And so many in the Holy Church today do not carry his name. And this is done in the most serious manner by all manner of heresy, by all manner of error, by all manner of lies. And this her heresy has entered very deeply into our church entered into the Catholic tradition, entered everywhere, that we don't believe that Jesus Christ is really the Lord and Master. This is one of the tragedies, for instance, in the modern seminaries of the Society of St. Pius X. Not only that they are saying, not only that they are saying that Vatican II is okay, which is a grave sin, 
that 95% of the council is good and the other 5% is misunderstood. That's what Bishop Fillet says. Or that the Vatican the new mass is legitimate, which is an abomination before God and a sin against the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. That's not all. When they turn souls to psychiatrists and psychologists and modern pills, when they look for natural solutions to supernatural problems, <coughs> they believe that there is another way than the way of the Blessed Virgin Mary to overcome the crisis in the church. When they no longer believe in miracles, no longer believe in the power of Christ, the only way in which this world's crisis can be solved is by a miraculous intervention of heaven. There is no other way. The only way is by a miraculous intervention. And it will come. The Blessed Virgin Mary will bring that miraculous intervention just like she did in Guadalupe in Mexico in 1531. She will bring about that miraculous intervention. At the day of our own choosing, we have to believe in the power of the Blessed Virgin and that she will bring that miraculous intervention whenever she wants. But we have to have a complete faith that only Christ can solve the troubles of our world, not only the supernatural troubles, but the natural troubles. What did the people do when they came to Christ? Lord, I have leprosy. <clears throat> Lord, my, my, I, I am lame and cannot walk. They went to Christ, and He cured their lameness. He cured their leprosy. He cured their sicknesses, both physical and spiritual and mental. He cured everything because He's God. He is the one that determines whether we have wheat or whether we have rice. He is the one that determines whether or not we live or die. And when we live or die, He is the one that judges every element in, in the universe. And so we must believe in His name. He is the one who makes all things as they are. And we must believe in the totality of His kingdom. Because there is now in the world, there are now in the world many true disciples of Satan who want to pull together a whole synthesis of a demonic world, which is modernism, evolution. In this modern world, which wants to rip apart all things, we must have the synthesis of the Catholic faith, where we see Christ in all things, because He is in all things, and we see His power in all things, and we know that His Word is more powerful than anything you see in the outside. And so therefore, when Christ speaks to His Holy Mother, and says that she will have a miraculous victory in a marvelous way, when things seem the darkest, that's what must happen. And when she will bring about the great victory, we must believe in that great victory. And we must believe completely in the victory of Christ as he says it must be. And in no other way. We're in a great crisis of faith in which we do not really believe in Christ. We say the word, but we have all kinds of other backup plans. We have so many backup plans. We believe in the Lord Jesus Christ and our bank account. We believe in Christ and our friends. We believe in Christ and our security system. We believe in Christ and our medication. We believe in Christ, etc., etc., etc. We must decide. Do we really believe in our Lord Jesus Christ and His church and His truth and His way or not? We cannot put our confidence in bank accounts. We cannot put our confidence in friends. We cannot put our confidence in anything of the outside world. We cannot put our confidence in any kind of compromise with lies because the most serious sin against the name of Christ is to lie. The name signifies what a nature is. And Jesus Christ is creator. Jesus Christ is the word made flesh. He is God. He is the truth. He is the way and the life. And therefore we can never speak against that way, truth, and life. He is the, mystical, the head of the mystical body of his own body which is our holy church. And so we must have a complete confidence in the sacredness of this name. And during those eight days between December 25th and January 1st, all the Blessed Virgin and St. Joseph did was contemplate this child and his magnificence and how this little child in the manger kept the manger from falling to pieces. A little child kept the rocks of the cave from collapsing upon them. A little child kept them warm. A little child was in their hearts warming them. A little child was ruling them. And how they saw his workings throughout all creation. That this little child was the one that made Adam. This little child is going to conquer the devil. This little child is going to be the greatest of all kings. And there he is, a silent little child in that manger. And they adored him. And they had complete confidence in him. And they only wanted to be able to say his name but they dare not speak it until he had first shed his blood. And 
Once he shed his blood, they said that name in the most sacred way that it could ever be spoken. But when they said it, it was not a word. They believed in every, every fiber of their whole being, the Holy Mother of God and our St. Joseph, and what this child is, and what he remains until the end of time. He who is the, 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 when his name is spoken, drives out all the devils. When the name is spoken, not the word. Let us ask of God the grace to be able to truly say his name as it is meant to be said with all of our hearts. And this cannot be done without the faith, without a true deep faith, which cannot be given to us without the special love of the Blessed Virgin and the special protection of her. So let us love this most sacred and holy name of our Lord Jesus Christ, by which makes every knee in heaven, on earth, under earth bow. And may it really be the name that guides our every thought, our every word, and our every deed for the rest of our lives until we're able to see our Lord for all eternity in heaven. Blessed God bless you all, Father, and Son, and Holy Ghost. Amen.